Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Manager of Dataversity. We would like to thank you for joining this Dataversity webinar. You can't have best in class governance without best in class data lineage. Sponsored today by Octopi. Just a couple of points to get us started. Due to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. For questions, we will be collecting them via the Q&A in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Or if you'd like to tweet, we encourage you to share highlights or questions via Twitter using hashtag Dataversity. And if you'd like to chat with us or with each other, we certainly encourage you to do so. And just to note, the Zoom chat defaults is to just the panelists, but you may absolutely change that to network with everyone. And to access the Q&A or the chat panels, you can find those icons in the bottom middle of your screen for those features. And as always, we will send a follow-up email within two business days containing links to the slides, the recording of the session, and any additional information requested throughout the webinar. Now, let me introduce to you our speakers for today, David Bitten and Anil Rameshwar. David has over 20 years of experience working with technology companies and a solid history of global leadership across leadership success in business-to-business -business enterprise sales, specifically software as a service. During the last four years, he has led sales and business development efforts at Octopi, where he enjoys helping BI and analytics professionals harness the power of automated data lineage and discover to achieve full control of their data. Anil is an accomplished big data analyst, data developer, database developer, and software engineer with 15 years experience processing multiple petabyte data sets and is skilled in finding the subtle nuances of data that make the difference between day-to-day -day metrics and valuable business insights. And with that, I will give the floor to David and Anil to get today webinar started. Hello and welcome. Thank you very much, Shannon. I'm super excited today to be able to host this together with uh, our uh, good friend Anil and uh, Zigo. And uh, what I'd like to do is jump straight in uh, to the presentation where I'll have Anil uh, just, uh, you know, share some of their challenges and how they used uh, Octopi to address them. So Anil, um, would you like to introduce yourself? I think Shannon already did so, but uh, maybe you'd like to talk about the company that you work for and the existing data environment and so on? Sure, um, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Anil Rameshwar. I am the data architect at Zigo. Um, I started at Zigo in February of 2020. And at that point, uh, what I came into was a software stack with a BI solution that was built on Microsoft SQL Server. And there was no lineage uh, whatsoever. Um, and there was a decided lack of trust in the data. So maybe we can go to the next slide here, David. <clears throat> sure. Excellent. So yeah, there was um, uh, multiple reports being consumed by multiple business units. And this had evolved over time without any governance or oversight. Uh, so there was no data governance team. Uh, it was developed by third-party consultants. And what happened is as the data got into more and more hands, the trust in the data uh, began to erode. So by the time I had arrived, um, nobody really trusted what they found in the data warehouse. Um, the, the metrics were uh, in conflict with uh, queries against source systems. So I was tasked with kind of rebuilding Zigo's entire data platform from the ground up. Uh, and part of that um, endeavor included providing an end-to-end -end data lineage solution so that we could rebuild trust in the data and to make effective uh, business decisions. You can go to the uh, next slide, please. Sure, so um, just uh, with these challenges in mind, you embarked on your team's initiatives, correct? Correct. Yeah. So, okay. Do you want to share? Can you share that a little bit about that with us? Um, sure. Uh, well, uh, the initiatives were to uh, primarily to uh, regain trust in the data so we could make effective uh, business decisions. Or are you talking about the actual mechanics behind it? Sorry, David. Uh, that's okay. Whatever you'd like to share with us. Basically, the 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 slide here, the the data engineering okay. initiative. So. Sure. Uh, so we had uh, four core applications that were uh, disparate. The legacy data warehouse only included one of those four applications. So folks were frequently trying to pull data from application B and commingle it with data from application A, and they were getting the wrong results. So we determined that our best course of action was to build a data lake in Snowflake. Uh, from the data lake, we developed a conformed layer. Uh, and then on top of that conformed layer, we we developed the reporting layer. Um, this is where we decided we needed a data lineage solution. Some of the challenges that we faced um, uh, with the legacy data warehouse 
were fundamentally related to that source code, which was buried deep within stored procedures and SSIS packages. So we found multiple problems, for example, uh, stale dimension data where a lookup table hadn't been updated, changes in the source system behavior where the LDW code remained static, um, transformations that had changed over time without history tracking. In other words, the metrics would change over time. And then um, one of the scariest pieces that I had to tackle was the derived columns with ambiguous names and unknown definitions. So sure. we, we decided to rebuild all of this in Snowflake and tackle the majority of those problems with the conformed layer. Um, the data pipeline, oh yeah, there we go. Uh, it's the next slide. I think I was one slide ahead of you, I apologize. Oh, no, no worries, sure. Yeah. So this so, slide or, yeah, sure. Yeah, so yeah, I think I've kind of gone over all of these, but the biggest thing was uh, we didn't have uh, a single source of truth. Um, the other challenge that we faced was the current system with the legacy data warehouse, it only served the financial department, but then it began, as it began to be used by the customer success department and our um, tech ops teams, they were getting the wrong data. So that's when we determined we needed Octopi and a data lineage solution so that we could accurately track data from source system all the way to end consumers. Sure, okay. And so this effort could have been redu uh, reduced to a few hours with the data lineage solutions in place. Is that what you're saying? Uh, well, one of the big challenges is uh, a report consumer would get a report and they would compare the results to what they saw in the source system. And then it would take hours or weeks to actually track down what had changed, what, what was the variance between they, what they were seeing in the legacy data warehouse report and what they were seeing in the source system. Okay. All right. Did you, so uh, up until now, there has been uh, there was basically no man and no management tracking or visibility in where sensitive data exists or beyond the source systems and and how it was consumed. So, Zigo is now, as I understand, applying appropriate data masking and governance policies in order to ensure that the data is protected from source systems through all the different endpoints. Can you uh, maybe uh, elaborate on that? Yes. Uh, thanks for reminding me of that. So one of the other challenges I found with the legacy data warehouse is uh, sensitive data, uh, thankfully not PCI, but PII and um, other sensitive data was exposed uh, originally for consumption by the finance department. Uh, however, as the usage grew without governance, um, the inappropriate data was in the hands of the inappropriate folks. And uh, what we also found is that data was being shared directly to our clients without any governance or oversight. So we needed to put a stop to that as soon as we got a data governance policy in place. We used Snowflake's tagging mechanism to uh, tag the data. And we're using Octopi now to see where the sensitive data uh, lands in the conformed layer. And then we're applying masking policies using Octopi's data lineage to ensure that the appropriate departments don't see data that they're not privy to. Great, so thank you. Thank you for sharing that with uh, us, Anil. So basically to summarize uh, what you just covered up today, what you uh, what you need to look for in lineage solutions in order to have the best in class governance program and data lineage is actually the crucial part of data governance since it provides the records of data movement. And the top three features that you need to look for in a good data lineage solution will be, of course, to provide the best support your, to your governance program. And those are coverage. So we wanna see, of course, as many systems that's possible covered, uh, such as ETLs, data warehouses, analysis, reporting tools, visual map, which will be a quick, a quick to follow and understand. And of course, the automatic data catalog, which integrates lineage, and that will allow access to assets with the capability to track their lineage in, at any given time. So what I'm going to do now is jump into the demo portion of tonight's uh, webinar. Sure. So give me a, one moment. You should be able to see the Octopi, um, the Octopi environment, uh, demo environment in front of us today. So thanks once again, uh, Anil. I'm going to now jump into the demo and show some, uh, some of the attendees here today how Octopi can actually provide them best-in-class lineage uh, for their data governance um, initiative. So what we have here on the uh, screen is the Octopi um, demo environment. On the left-hand side, what we see here, just to, gonna go through what we have on the screen and then we'll jump into a demo using a few different use cases. On the left-hand side, these are basically the different modules within Octopi showing you the, uh, as, far, as far as we understand, the best-in-class data lineage because we actually have 
three layers or data lineage XD, which is which is cross system lineage, inner system lineage, and end to end column lineage. And, and, to, and together with that, we also have the discovery space. And I'll explain to that, uh, so explain to you why that's important uh, just in a few moments as well. All right, so uh, to further uh, explain what we have on the screen, on the left-hand side, these in our demo environment, we have 398 different ETLs from various different systems that we can see here on the screen. In the middle, we have roughly, or well, exactly 3,247 3, DB objects, including tables and views, for example, from these various systems that we see here. And that's basically a sampling of the types of technologies that Octopi is able to out of the box extract or automatically extract the metadata from. And then here we see here on the right hand side of the BI tools or the reporting tools and the 23 different reports. So what I'd like to do is um, uh, show you the power of Octopi with reference to a few different use cases. As I mentioned, we'll touch on the very high level, the various areas within Octopi. And from there, of course, you'll be able to see how that's important to understand at the very granular level uh, uh, the data lineage of your, your data environment to support a best-in-class data governance platform uh, initiative. So the, uh, the way I'll do that is uh, through a use case. The first one that I will go through is going to be the most common one that we see amongst our customers or that our customers are telling us is the most common one amongst their organizations or their data, data environments. And that is you have an error in a report. I'm sure we're all very, uh, very familiar with that. And um, so in, in general, in most organizations today, there's an error in a report. If there's an error in a report, the way that's handled is probably very similar to this. Let's say you have Mr. or Mrs. CFO looking at a report. Let's say, you know, it's the end of the quarter. And, uh, and, uh, and, um, and of course, they're stressed to in order to be able to, um, to support or to provide the, uh, the uh, quarterly earnings. Let's say there's something wrong with that report. Of course, they're going to open up a support ticket. The appropriate team is going to now need to look into that to try to understand what went wrong with that report. And, and most likely they'll need to go through a process which is very similar in most organizations. That is, they'll start off by probably um, uh, taking, looking, uh, taking a look at the map of the, uh, of the systems and then probably taking a look at the tables and views uh, that were involved in the creation of that report. They'll probably look into maybe the glossary to see if the labels uh, were given the same names and if not, which glossary, sorry, was used. After that, uh, uh, the error may not be in the data database area, then uh, probably look into the ETL. Looking into that, of course, will be all of this will be done manually. Most likely, it will involve multiple people within um, different or different uh, teams within the organization that have different um, uh, responsibilities within their domain. So what I'm getting at is basically a lot of people, a lot of time may not be, of course, even 100%. Uh, so it's basically not efficient. Now, imagine, and, and of course, that would take literally most uh, most likely in most organizations anywhere from hours, days, uh, weeks, even months, if, uh, if, you know, at the most extreme case. Now, what I'd like to do is show you that same scenario and giving you an example of the lineage of the, of the capability lineage capabilities within Octopi um, and show you how that would be done literally automatically in a few seconds. So let's imagine for a moment that the uh, issue that we're having with is in a report called customer products. I'm going to come into the Octopi's lineage space, type in the name of the report that we're having trouble with. And right now we're going to go into the first level of lineage that Octopi provides. Remember I mentioned three layers of lineage, uh, Octopi lineage XD cross system, inner system, and then end to end column to column. So right now at the high level, what we need to understand is how that re uh, report was created. I'm gonna, as I typed it in, you see here that Octopi has filtered through all the metadata and shown me the report we're having trouble with. If I click on cross system lineage in about a second, I now understand how that report was created. And most organizations just to get to this very high level of understanding may take hours or days. As you can see here at the click of a mouse, we now have that understanding here on the screen. On the right hand side, what we see here is uh, the report that we're having trouble with. As we move to the left, we can start to see how that report was re uh, was created. And we see here that there are two views that were in the, uh, involved in the creation of that report. If I click on any object on the screen, as you see here, you get a radial dial that comes up. And what that does is offers us more capabilities and more information. So let's say, for example, I needed to get a visualization of this view. Maybe there were many different transformations and, and I wanted to get a visualization, which may help me understand it. Clicking on that will show us now the source, transformation, and target. As I move to my left, I continue to try to trace how this uh, the data landed in that report. I can see here that there were also three different tables that were involved in the creation of that report. 
So similarly, if I click on a table, I can get also that similar uh, radial dial. But in this case, let's say, for example, I'm sure you're probably familiar with being tasked making a change to a specific table, a calculation, um, a transformation, whatever that might be, sorry, in that table. And what we can see here is that if I click on that table, I get that familiar radial dial. But what we see here on the uh, bottom right is a six with an arrow to the right. So that means that there are actually target objects or objects that are dependent on that table. So if I were to make changes to that table, I can most likely be sure that some, if not all of these different objects that have now popped up will have been affected, including an additional stored procedure, a tabular table, measure groups, and these four different uh, report or three different reports. As we continue to move to our, and I can, I can imagine how that, that long that would have taken, of course, if you had to do that manually or in another situation where you're not using Octopi. In any case, as we move to the left, we start to see here, or we come to the ETLs that were involved in that report, not one ETL, but multiple different ETLs were involved in the creation of that report. And the reason why I'm pointing that out is that many organizations are using many different systems because systems come along and they, they are integrated. Maybe there's a merger and acquisition. Maybe there's a legacy system that you just haven't, uh, haven't put to rest and you've introduced new technologies. So you're probably using many different systems to manage and move your data. And that's not a challenge for Octopi, as you can see here we can still show you the path that that data has taken in order to land on that report. Now a couple more things that I wanted to point out before I continue on. You may have noticed, I know that it's probably small on your screen, but there is a shadow to the right of this object over here, this table. There is a shadow to the left of this ETL and there's a shadow all the way around this ETL over here. What that's telling you is basically there are dependent objects or there are, this object is actually sourcing from other objects and then you can actually continue to, um, to decipher or, or unravel the lineage by just clicking on this case. For example, the eight to the left will show us now the lineage uh, or the other objects that this ETL is sourcing from and which is basically these eight different tables. So to continue on with our scenario, we asked our customer, this one here that was having troubles with this report, if they had any idea what went wrong with that report. And they admitted that a, a few weeks earlier before they started using Octopi, they had made changes to this one ETL over here. And most likely when they make changes, they usually run into or encounter production issues, whereas a common, which is a common scenario in most organizations. Now we asked them if they were going to be making those changes and uh, they knew that they were gonna be encountering production issues, why not be proactive? You know, why not look into what will be affected, make the appropriate corrections and save everybody the hassles of the production issues, save the data quality issues that then result with all those uh, production issues, save uh, or increase the confidence in the data or the trust in the data as Anil was speaking about before, because if the data is not is seen, is seen as, as solid, then of course the trust goes up. Now, of course, as we all know, that's a lot harder uh, said, a lot easier said than done, because in most organizations, in order to do that, it means looking into many, many different objects, many different ETLs, uh, uh, tables and views, reports, and so on. It could be literally thousands or even hundreds of thousands. So to try to be proactive really is just almost impossible. So most organizations work in that reactive measure, in the reactive way, of course, trying to avoid production issues whenever there are changes done. And then if there are production issues, they will address them as they become apparent. And therein lies a lot of the issues with the uh, data quality. And of course, <clears throat> because uh, you're only fixing what you know of, and if you're only fixing what you know of, I'm sure you can imagine that there will be things that fall through the cracks. So now with Octopi, we've empowered you to become proactive. And so you can actually now ensure that there are little or no production issues by understanding exactly what will be broken if you make a change. So like this customer, if you were to make a change to the, wanted to make a change to the CTL, you're now empowered to understand exactly what we, what will so, so far, what will be of course affected. Now, before I jump into that, what we've shown you so far at the system level, which is the highest level of lineage, was a root cause analysis for a specific report. Now we're gonna jump the other way. We're gonna do an impact analysis. Let's say, for example, before we were to make a change to the CTL, we jumped into the cross-system lineage of that ETL. We understood exactly um, the lineage of that ETL in order to be prepared uh, to make the appropriate corrections before we make those changes. So now what we see here though, is that for example, um, when we started this scenario, we were looking into this one report over here, that was the error that we were having trouble with. But now that what we see here is that when we have complete clarity and understand the lineage of this ETL, we can see that most likely when more changes were made to this ETL, 
that is not going to be the only story. Most likely, some uh, that is not going to be the only error. Most likely, what will happen is some, if not all, of these different objects on the screen could have or would have been affected by any one change to these, this ETL. So, of course, these stored procedures, dimensions, tabular tables, measure groups, views, tables, stored procedures, and reports could have been affected. So, what most likely will happen as time progresses. In most organizations, these reports will start to get opened by different people at different times throughout the year. And of course, then we hope that those who are uh, those users who are going to be opening these reports will notice the errors in them and they will open a support ticket. And I say hope because, of course, as you understand, if they don't notice the errors, then it's just worse. So let's say they hope we, we, we hope that they open the uh, support tickets, they notice the errors in them. Those responsible now for looking into those errors have been tasked to try to figure out what the root cause is. And as you can imagine, throughout the year, you're probably not 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 stuck with only two or three or, or four or, or what do we have here, um, uh, seven different reports that you have errors with them. And it's probably hundreds, if not thousands, as you can imagine. So we established earlier that most likely will take anywhere from hours, days, or even weeks to try to get to a root cause of an error. So you can multiply and extrapolate and see, understand, and understand how long or how much time is being wasted by those who are looking into that. Because of course, if they were using Octopi, they could know from the get-go that that ETL is the root cause. And of course, put all that time and effort to better use, such as migration projects, data governance initiatives, initiative data quality initiatives, and so on. So now uh, to continue on, uh, again, what we've shown you is a root cause uh, analysis, and then we showed you a impact analysis at the system level. Right now, what I'd like to do now is show you the next level of lineage, which is inner system lineage. So let's say we now needed to actually make a change to this ETL, and we wanted to know what the impact uh, that those changes might be at the column level. Simply clicking on now on the ETL, we're going to jump into the inner lineage, uh, uh, inner system lineage. And by simply, uh, I'm, uh, if you're using uh, SSIS and you'll be familiar with this, I'm just really taking a, uh, a 90,000 uh, foot view and dropping down. We're going from the top all the way down into what we see here, the container. And then in, within the container, we can now see the data flows themselves. So if I needed to get understanding at the, at, the, uh, at the column level within the system itself, with this inner system lineage, I simply click on map view. And now if I click on any field, I can actually see that there is the, um, or, or actually see the, the, um, the, um, the journey that that field has taken from the source all the way to the target. Now, in addition to that, what we see here on the screen, on the green are the source, in orange are the transformations, and red are the targets. Now, let's say you have a transformation, you'll have a little icon on the top left over here that tells you that there is actually a transformation in there. If I double click it, I can click here and see, uh, and see actually the expression for that transformation. If you, uh, additionally, if you have a calculation, you'll see an FX somewhere in the uh, lineage. You can double click that FX and you'll get that, um, that um, calculation. Now, of course, we can go at, the, at, at this level, we can go forwards and backwards within the uh, system. So we have a complete system lineage or inner system lineage. And here I'm going to just basically give you an idea. I'm going to go backwards, taking a look at the ETL that's loading to that table itself. And what we see here is also the, uh, the data flow at the, uh, at, the, at the column level. So for now, uh, now that I've shown you the inner system lineage, I want to further continue on and show you the actual column to column lineage. And so uh, finding that out is very simple. Let's say the, uh, the error that you're having is with, or the issue that you're having is with unit price uh, column, right clicking on it and clicking on end to end column lineage, or actually clicking on the three dots and clicking on end to end column lineage will now show me the lineage of that column from the moment that that column enters into the landscape all the way to the reporting system. Now we can see that at the column level, we can see it at the schema level, table level, and also at the database level as well, giving you the granularity that you might need in order to understand or to help you with your day-to-day -day activities. Now, further going on, now let's say you needed to get an understanding of this column. And so you wanna complete the picture and you wanna have an understanding of that column within, uh, you wanna get a business description of that column. For example, it's tax amount that we clicked on. Now we get a business description of it 
And in this case, what's a demo environment without having a, a little issue? So let's take a look and see here. This is the one actually that I was looking for. So here we go. We we're supposed to jump in to unit price. That's the one that I clicked on. And what we see here is first of all, there's a, a check mark on it, which tells us that that one is approved. So if you come into this uh, description, you can now get a business description being confident that that was approved by the data owner. The automated data catalog is actually built for you automatically. It's the A and the ADC. The way we do that is by extracting the metadata and analyzing the metadata in order to create it for you. The descriptions can also be uh, populated, but of course the caveat to that is that those descriptions be somewhere within your environment. I won't go into the, uh, all of the details within our data catalog. Of course, we can schedule another call for that. But before I go into that, I just wanted to show you one more point, which is the data discovery. And so uh, we, we were in it was the uh, what we were in was the end-to-end uh, -end column to column lineage. I'm going to go back to that. I should be able to go back to that. Okay, let's go back to that from here. All right, so we're here. We understand the column lineage. Now let's say we now want to understand uh, the uh, the column itself and understand everywhere it would be impact everywhere that that column. Uh, is referenced and what would be impacted if I needed to make a change. And that's also completely integrated, right clicking on or clicking on it now searching in discovery will take us to the final module that I wanted to show you. And Octopi now goes through all of the different systems that are connected to it. So you can, you can see here the automated, the ADF, Informatica, SSIS, so the various ETLs, databases, data warehouses, analysis, reporting tools, and so on, and shows you everywhere it's found unit price within your environment. So if you need to make a change, you're going to take to need to take this into con, uh, into consideration. It's also going to show you where it's not. So you see here in green where it is and how many times it's found it. And you've seen it in gray and where it's telling you it's not saving you, I would say, just as important saving you uh, as much time, uh, saving you that much time, not uh, enabling you not to go into that, to look uh, to look into that. I'm just going to go further to give you an idea more of what you can get the the granularity of information you can get from the data discovery module. And let's say, for example, we see here SQL Server and it's found unit price in objects 46 times. If I click on any one of those green objects on the screen, it gives us more information, such as uh, in this case, we're looking at the objects themselves. If I jump into any uh, one of these, I can actually jump into the definition. When I click on the definition, what pops up on the right hand side is actually the SQL that was used in order to create that definition. In this case, let's take a look at it. Fingers crossed that it works. And it's showing us actually a map or a visualization of that. So finally, you can see that with Octopi's automation, we can help you reduce the amount of time that you've been investing in uh, in looking for these, uh, uh, looking for the, or, or trying to trace back the lineage, for example. And in this case, we can see here one specific column. If you needed to make a change, I'm sure that happens uh, very often. You now understand literally in seconds the impact uh, uh, that those changes would have and how much effort it would take, of course, in order to uh, to uh, to do that project. Shannon, that was everything that uh, I had to uh, share with you. Uh, maybe you wanted to open the panel up to questions. Absolutely. And just to answer the most commonly asked questions, just a reminder, I will send a follow-up email for this webinar by end of day Monday with links to the slides and links to the recording of the session. So diving in here, um, there's been a lot of questions in both the chat and the q and I'll try to get to the Q&A here in a second, but uh, I just wanted to jump into this first question that came in for you, Anil. Uh, I know you answered it in the chat, but uh, just if you want to expand on it, did you decide to build the platform, um, rebuild using Snowflake, et cetera, before you devised a data management strategy or after or during? It was uh, in parallel. So we knew that part of the entire data architecture solution and rebuilding trust in the data would include a data management solution. In addition, uh, when I started uh, with Snowflake, we did not have a data governance team or a data governance office. Those were installed approximately three months after we uh, got Snowflake, uh, the Snowflake development efforts started. Awesome. So, um, David, so what kind of metadata is collected from reports? Also, do you take SQL codes, views, functions, et cetera, as metadata scanning task? Sure. So what we're, we're, we're uh, what we're extracting from uh, the different systems, every different system is different. But we're, for example, we're looking at tables and views. Of course, we're looking at uh, SQL or stored procedures, et cetera. As long as it's technology that is uh, supported by Octopi, we can actually out of, out of the box, go into there, extract that metadata and uh, provide you with that lineage. There's nothing different that you need to do in order to work with Octopi. Um, as long as it's one of these technologies that are supported here, we can connect to it out of the box. 
extract that metadata and provide you with that lineage that you saw here. Perfect. So, um, Anil, how did you integrate uh, metadata management practice and solution with Octai Stadia lineage and does Octai leverage an organization's metadata repository? So, so what we yeah go ahead. Okay. Uh, what we've done is for each of the underlying uh, database uh, source plat applications, we first imported their uh, metadata, so just their information schema, so information schema dot tables, information schema dot columns. Then um, that's imported into the Snowflake data lake. Then when it gets to the conformed layer, uh, we're actually adding in. It's part of a requirement in our in our um, deployment. Uh, you have to have a business definition uh, that's included in a JSON construct. JSON construct, and that's what we export to Octopi into their automated data catalog. Hopefully that answers the question. Yeah, anything you want to add, David? Uh, no, that was perfectly answered. Thank you. I love it. No. And there's lots of questions, David, here about what you what Octopi connects to or doesn't connect to. Do you have a list of um, products that you connect to? Yeah, sure. I showed that earlier. Uh, but you can simply come to the octopi.com supported dash technologies, and you'll see all of the technology that we support out of the box. Currently, that's what we have here, and what's coming soon will be available in the next quarter or two. Additionally, to what you see here, we are in development of open APIs, which you'll be able to, in addition to the out-of-the-box technologies, you'll be able to use those to connect to just about any other technology. So um, in essence, you'll be able to have full lineage, whether it's supported out of the box or not. In addition to that, we also have augmented links, and that is uh, currently available today. And that is also for technologies that we don't support. Uh, that is a, a somewhat manual process for the unsupported system, but you can do that once and then it will be, uh, be uh, represented within the lineage. Okay, hopefully that answers Perfect, that and question. I love it. Yeah, and I just put the uh, link in the uh, chat for everyone in case you have that. Um, what does Octopi data lineage do that, uh, uh, so what, how, how does your data lineage differ from um, what Snowflake just announced um, with their integration and how do you... Sorry, uh, was that the end of the question? It was. <laughs> Oh, okay, certainly. So first of all, Octopi is, uh, as far as we understand, has the broadest of breadth and depth of technologies that we support. As you saw on the screen here, uh, I would imagine that the uh, ETLs, data warehouses and reporting tools is, is going to be a lot different than what uh, Snowflake is, is uh, supporting. The, the depth of the lineage that you can see within Octopi, as you saw here today, not just one, one or two layers of lineage, we provide you with all three layers of lineage. And the third, which I really didn't cover yet, setting up Octopi literally takes hours not days, weeks, or months, as maybe some of the competitors might might say, literally hours. So does the, that target extension show um, where exactly the error occurred? I didn't understand the question. Yeah, there was a, does that target ex, uh, expansion, sorry, uh, six, show exactly where the error occurred? Oh, no. So we provide you with the information. Of course, we don't tell you where the error could be, but we give you the information in order to for you to be able to uh, then be able to go ahead and correct that. Going forward, actually, we are working on AI technology. We'll actually show you and even uh, even uh, bring you to the actual uh, techno the actual area or the actual space, for example, with its a snowflake specific column. Uh, we are working on that going forward. That will be available. And what relation did you use to connect conceptual entity person to logical entity person? Uh, entity belongs to entity. No goal is uh, connect conceptual model to logical model. I'll have to defer that question to our technical people and get back to the, uh, the questioner uh, via email. All right. Uh, so, sorry. And my questions just moved. Sorry, let me get back to my questions here. So uh, would it seem that the business terms are harvested from the uh, available column descriptions, if any, if the column descriptions do not exist, can one manually enter a business term definition and lock it so it cannot be changed when the process is run again? Yes, absolutely. In addition to that, if uh, if it's not in the reporting system, if you have that kept somewhere, for example, in a spreadsheet, we can also um, uh, uh, upload that into Octopi. Yeah, I'd, I'd actually like to um, augment that response, David, because one, one of the most attractive uh, 
pieces of the automated data catalog is it does allow you to track, um, I know it's beyond the scope of lineage, but uh, you can identify the data stewards and that's where the final arbiter of that definition exists. So uh, you can actually run reports against that and you can tag individuals to say, hey, um, subject matter expert on this table, has this definition changed? Very That's cool. a good point, and actually maybe show that right now. Uh, so let's say, for example, you have uh, unit price, and it says unit price in a US dollars, including tax. So uh, like Anil said, you have, of course, the data owners and the data stewards. Um, but you can also just have a chat with them. So if you need to ask a question, you just click on the chat button, type in the name of the person, whoever the data steward is, ask them a question. They'll get an email, uh, an email indicating that there is a question, and they have to come back to here to answer that. And the point is, I mean, we had a lot of people ask, why don't you use Slack or why don't you use Teams? And that would actually defeat the purpose. The reason for that is because when you ask the questions and the answers, most likely that question and answer will come up again, maybe even the same day. And what happens with Octopi is you'll actually have now a, um, a uh, you'll have it listed here so that the uh, following users who are going to actually be looking for those probably similar questions can have that and find the answers for themselves. So how is the lineage harvested by Octopi? Great question. Give me one second, and I hope to be able. To, oh, actually, I don't have that in this uh, uh, in this uh, PowerPoint presentation. Actually, maybe I do. No, I don't. All right. So I, it'll take me a little bit of time to find that slide, but I'll explain it. In any case, the way it works is Octopi sends you a client, and Anel can attest to this. The client setup literally takes no more than an hour or two. In theory, I guess it should. And, and, and of course, that's in, in, uh, making sure that you have the or ensuring that you have the uh, appropriate permissions. If you do, it shouldn't take more than an hour or two. What you're doing is basically pointing Octopi to the various systems that you're going to be extracting metadata from, such as the ETL the data warehouse, the analysis reporting tool. We give you full instructions on where we need to point, uh, where we need you to point to Octopi to. Once you hit the run button, Octopi goes ahead, connects to those systems, extracts that metadata, saves it into XML format. And those XML format files, of course, can be opened, inspected to ensure that there's no data, which is another point that I wanna make sure is absolutely clear. We don't analyze data whatsoever. So if there is no data that's going to be going outside of your environment, it will be strictly metadata. And once you've confirmed that at, uh, those XML files can be uploaded to the cloud that then is then uploaded to our instance in Octopi, uh, your instance or the customers in uh, portal within Octopi. Once that metadata or those XML files have been uploaded there, <clears throat> that triggers the Octopi, <clears throat> excuse me, the Octopi service to run. And <clears throat> that's where all of the magic happens, where the algorithms, the machine learning, the vast amount of processing power comes to play in order to crunch that metadata and provide it uh, in, the, uh, in, in, in the way that you saw it here today. And can um, Octopi auto taking of business term of conceptual data model to column in PDD in data catalog? I didn't understand the question. I'll have to defer that one then again to our technical people. We will answer those questions via email after the uh, webinar. I love it. I mean, I will make sure and get those over to you. Um, and can it handle, uh... sorry, let me uh, just, Getting tongue tied here. Um, can Octopi parse Python scripts and display it in lineage? It's another technical question. I see SQL transformations. Yeah, so we do have, of course, we do support SQL uh, stored procedures or any type of actual stored procedures from uh, databases or data warehouses that are supported by Octopi. Python currently is not supported by Octopi. We are looking in developing that specifically. However, as I mentioned earlier, we are in the middle of developing open APIs, which will be enable you to uh, connect and, uh, and uh, uh, read uh, basically any um, Python or JSON or so on a script and extract the metadata from there. Awesome. And I saw a question here in here, Anil, on what size, how big, large is your company? Uh, Zika was recently acquired, uh, but prior to our acquisition uh, by Global Payments, we were uh, less than 500. So, um, can Octopi infer or determine all variations of customer ID across the uh, data landscape, like uh, CUS, CUS underscore ID, C underscore ID, customer underscore number, et cetera, and show they all mean or are the same thing? Absolutely. That's actually part of the lineage and what I showed you earlier. Uh, that's actually, yeah, absolutely. And 
And how about data governance, like complying with CCPA, a client can request and delete their social security number, things like that? Absolutely. So that's one of the um, one of the main use cases. If you need to ensure that, uh, for example, a customer's uh, social insurance number has de been deleted, you need to know exactly where that is found within the environment, and Octopi can show you that. Oh, so many great questions coming in. Um, is it required to have relationships, PK, FK relations connected between logical entities in data catalog tools showing data lineage? Are entities enough in LDM or are we need, are we need uh, relations? That is, um, again, a deferred question. Apologize for that. No worries. Lots of great uh, questions here. So uh, for the best data lineage, uh, what is the prerequisite? Should the databases have primary key, foreign key all set up? Uh, really, there, there is nothing else that you need to do. As I mentioned earlier, if it's technology that we support out of the box, you don't need to work or do anything in order to pre prepare for Octopi. You don't need to do anything to work differently in order for Octopi to extract that metadata. The key, uh, the, key, uh, the key point here is that it's a technology that's supported by Octopi. If that's the case, that's where algorithms come into play. We just connect to, excuse me, we, ex uh, we connect to those, um, uh, those sources and uh, we extract that metadata through the analysis that we do with the algorithms, the machine learning, the processing power, the fact that we had, we analyze also all three layers, the uh, semantic presentation and physical layer, we're able to provide you with that lineage. Uh, nothing else that you need to do. How quickly is the harvest done and then translated into lineage? Also, how are systems connected together? Do you use, uh, do you analyze feeds from one system to another? Yes, of course, and even if they're in different locations, uh, those again, um, uh, major use cases for Octopi, providing you with that lineage. How is it done? As I mentioned earlier, we connect to the very system, extract that metadata, uh, that entire process, the initial setup should take an hour. After that, um, it should take you know, half an hour to do the extraction automatically. Uh, that can be set up to be run on a weekly basis. The upload shouldn't take more than a few minutes. The analysis can take up to 24 to 48 hours. It doesn't mean it takes 24 to 48 hours, but it can take up to 24 to 48 hours. And then you have, for example, uh, most customers will work this way, is uh, they'll upload a, a new extraction of the metadata on a Friday and Monday morning, they'll be certain to have a new version and they can continue working with the development. Any other questions, Shen? Yeah, sorry, I was talking to my mute button. Um, does Octopi scan and link other objects in the lineage like XML, JSON, Avro, uh, file structures, flat file structures like C, Sharp? So, C, uh, so languages in general are not supported by Octopi, except for if you want to call SQL, which is actually a language that is supported as in uh, the scripts. Um, XML, yes, is supported. Flat files, yes, are supported in our discovery module, which I showed you earlier. What about source to target maps in spreadsheets? Um, you mean that uh, I'm, I'm assuming that the, the customer is asking if they have source to target maps in spreadsheets. Um, no, I don't see that that uh, being uh, supported. It's not necessary in any case because Octopi will do that for you. If the actually, if let me answer a different way, if the customer, if that question is asking if we can provide a source to target in X in a, a, a an Excel spreadsheet, yeah, I mean that's uh, going against the uh, the reason for Octopi, which is the automation and being able to being able to see that within Octopi, but within Octopi you can export everything into uh, Excel <clears throat> spreadsheets, and uh, uh, that should answer both both sides of that question. And what's your licensing and pricing structure? So Octopi is priced per for the platform. There is one price, and the module there is one price. Um, there is no price for uh, there is no charge for anything else. Uh, so all of the uh, users can use Octopi um, um, with no additional costs. All of the training is included with that. The cloud fees are included with that. Uh, maintenance and upgrades are included with that. Together with that uh, subscription, you also get a dedicated customer success manager. So the moment you sign on with Octopi, we assign you a customer or CSM, and they take you through the ropes from the beginning to the end, provide you with any amount of training necessary, and we can get into the specific details on what the costs are. If anybody wants to schedule a call, uh, we can talk about your specific environment and I can give you exact pricing on that.
I love it. That's very nice. So um, can business terms be tagged like for sensitivity for P personal identifiable information, PII, and that relations inherited expressed to downstream objects like a materialized view. So when I am developing a report, I can see field X, Y, Z as is PII. So report or repeat, repeat that question because I think I might actually be able to answer it. If not, I'll have to defer it, defer it. But I think I heard something about tagging about, can you continue? Can yeah, you so can, can I take, take uh, let me um, rephrase a little bit. So can I take um, sensitive information um, personally identifiable information um, and that relations inherited express downstream objects um, like materialized views. So when I'm developing a report, I can see that this field is um, is tagged with as personal personal identifiable information. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Within the data catalog, you can do that. <clears throat> you have the capability of tagging. Uh, so for example, PII, and then of course you can see through the lineage uh, if you want to see through the lineage, you can actually understand the lineage, and then within the uh, automated data catalog, you can see that that uh, that that column, for example, is PII or sensitive. And can Octopi scan older programs used for ETL like C, Basic, Java, COBOL? Yeah, no, I don't know that there is any technology that still uses well that they could scan COBOL, but no, Octopi does not. Um, does it have intelligence to show potential data relations from one data source to another? Yes, absolutely. Uh, and can you input, do a CS, is it a CSV import? For, I didn't answer, is that an addition to the question that you just no. mentioned or is it a new question? New I question. question. <laughs> a new question. What is it? Uh, CSV import. Can we import CSV? Yeah, absolutely. And, we, and that would be um, supported within the data discovery. So as I mentioned earlier, someone had asked a question about flat files and XML, similar. And I don't see GCP technologies, for example, BigQuery on the supported technologies page. Are, do you know if they're on the roadmap? Yeah, they are on the roadmap uh, later on this year. And how does the lineage know an object is a BI report? Is it necessary to import metadata separately from a reporting server? No, absolutely not. Uh, as mentioned earlier, there's nothing that you need to do separately or differently in order to prepare or for Octopi to work. Uh, the uh, the key, key key criteria is that you're using technology that's supported by Octopi, such as Power BI, for example. If you are, we connect to it out of the box um, automatically with that initial setup, and we extract everything that we need. There's nothing else that you need to do. Can you show an example of your data masking? Um, don't, data masking. I don't know that I mentioned that we have it. Uh, we don't. Okay. So sorry. So let me let me take one step back. We do not analyze data, as we mentioned earlier. We're only analyzing metadata. So of course, there's no reason for data masking in Octopi. Makes sense. And there's a lot of questions in the chat about data quality. So is there any ability to manage data quality in Octopi, and if so, how? So data quality is outside of the scope of Octopi. Having said that, though, we are working on BI for BI or business intel or intelligence or for the data intelligence uh, team, uh, the data intelligence, I guess, environment uh, that is uh, going to be developed and released in the next year, uh, which will be able to give you insights and ideas about data quality and so on. And uh, if there's not any keys, foreign keys in the database, does it still have to provide the lineage? Is it still able to provide the lineage? Excuse me. I would imagine the question, the answer is yes, because I don't know the exact answer to this question, but I know that we don't need anything other than extracting the metadata. The only other thing that we might need on occasion if is the uh, connection parameters is the only other thing that Octopi would require in order to provide you with that lineage. So I would say the answer is yes. All right. Uh, I think the other questions are a bit technical. So we've got, I think that's all the questions we have for now. Well, David and Anil, this has been so great. I will get all those technical questions over to you um, that we weren't able to get to today so we can get that uh, included in our follow-up. Again, I'll send a follow-up email by end of day Monday for this webinar with links to the slides and links to the recording uh, as well. 
Thank you, Shannon. I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank Anil once again. Um, really appreciate it. And thank you, everyone, for joining and uh, listening to what we have to say. If uh, you like what you saw or if there's anything that piqued interest and you'd like to find out more, we'd encourage you to uh, schedule a, a call with one of our representatives to take you um, more in more detail through everything that you saw here today. Thank you both. Thanks to all our attendees. Hope you all have a great day. My pleasure. Thanks.